Hello everyone, welcome to my new channel Eve Rumor. This being my first video here pretty much ensures that, just like me, you are also all new around here and I certainly do hope you will stay along for this ride and all future ones as well. I've got plenty to share and I do hope somebody is going to find this information useful. So let's get into the first project I have decided to share, my e-bike conversion. I've had the 1000 watt hub conversion kit for at least a year before I got around to installing it and I have to thank the quarantine for slowing things down around here so I finally found a time to deal with this one. I did get this from Banggood, can't recall the price now, but they still have the kit, front or rear wheel, I chose the rear. Similar kits are available from eBay or AliExpress, sometimes even cheaper, so I will leave some links in the description below. The kit arrived in good condition, opened it up and thought I'd test it first to see if all is working before I proceed to do any modifications to my bike. It includes almost everything you would need to do the conversion version except a battery and a charger but I will dedicate a separate video to that so I wouldn't water down this one. So you are getting a 1000 watt hub motor along with a wheel and a tire outer and inner, a screen with some buttons so you have options pedal sensor, twist throttle, brake levers with the magnetic cutoff function, the motor controller, a few other small items and a bag for the controller. Right now I powered it from my DIY solar generator via a step up module set to 50 something volts to roughly match a 14S battery and then gave the throttle a slight twist just to make sure the motor will spin but not to overdo it in order to avoid messing up the cables. Good news is every Everything worked as it should, so I proceeded with getting to work on the bike. Bike of choice is what used to be my daily rider until I got my first proper electric kick scooter and then my first electric scooter, so thought doing this mod to it might bring it back within my scope of views as it was gathering dust in the corner anyway. First thing that had to be done would be to remove the rear wheel which in this case was quick and easy and I did decide to wear gloves to avoid getting grease and grime on my hands, really hate the cleanup. Next I removed the brake disc from the old wheel and bolted it on the hub motor using the original hardware and bolts. Since the hub came with a tire on it already, against my better judgement I thought I'd give it a chance so left it on there. Fitting it back on the bike is no trouble at all other than the added weight that you have to move around and it was quickly put in place and here I came across the first issue which was that the shaft was not going all the way into the mounts because of the shape of the mounts. Since I already had my mind set on using this bike for the project got the proper file and got to work on addressing that issue. Not long after, the holes had the right shape to accept the shaft all the way in which would make for a more secure install anyway. Once that was sorted, I proceeded to install a torque arm. Some people claim that their 1000 watt hubs have been fine for a while without one, just using the provided torque washers or whatever they're called, but I thought not to risk it, so had to order one separately since it was not included with the kit. Found one locally which was cut out of 3mm steel and was very strong so should do the job nicely. Following the torque arm I reinstalled the brake caliper because I had removed it at some point to make it easier to put the hub in and out while filing the openings. Once I put it back on I noticed that the wheel was no longer turning freely as before, the disc was rubbing somewhere and indeed upon taking a closer look you could see that the caliper is too far in towards the hub and the disc is rubbing against the outer brake pad. Apparently the hub puts the brake disc a bit further out than the stock wheel did, so there was no more room to pull the caliper out and adjust that, hence a bit more filing was needed. 
And on it went. And about 30 to 40 minutes later, I decided to be done with it and to test fit it and not surprisingly the rubbing issue had gone away and as you can now see the disc is closer to the inner brake pad as it should be and there is even a visible gap between the disc and the outer pad and now the wheel rotates freely without rubbing or binding anywhere so I was quite happy and ready to move on with the rest of the installation. Used some zip ties to route the hub cables along the frame to where the controller would be. Some are actually provided with the kit. For the time being I used zip ties to mount the controller as well because I had this huge battery box prepared and mounting it any other way would have made it impossible to fit those two on the inside of the frame. Interestingly enough, while playing around with a box, I only then realized that I'd bought the wrong type of box for my bike because the way it should mount makes it actually impossible to put it in or to get it out of the frame and that is if you manage to mount it in there somehow with the provided hardware. Turns out this particular type is one of those that go behind the seat vertically though my bike does not have the space necessary to put it there and I should have gotten one of these boxes they are designed to fit inside the frame but oh well had to work with what I currently had on hand so finally decided to temporarily mount it on the rear bike rack just until I can figure out some other cleaner and better looking solution. But getting back to the wiring, connecting the hub to the controller is pretty easy especially since you get the whole kit so the wiring is matched. Basically the three large wires coming from the hub go to the equally colored wires on the controller matching them color by color and then also put the other six pin connector from the hub into the matching one on the controller. That last one is the motor sensor so the controller would know the position of the magnets inside the motor at all times which makes for much smoother operation. With that sorted I moved on to installing the twist throttle which meant removing the old grip on the right hand side and sliding in the throttle unit. As you may have noticed I will not be replacing the brake levers with the ones in the kit because I don't like them and I think I can do without a magnetic cutoff sensor on this build. If you think that safety feature is critical to you by all means install them. Basically what they do is when you press the brake there is a sensor in it which tells the controller to cut the motor off. But let's see how it will be without that safety feature. Next I mounted the screen on there, tried to place it so it would be comfortable to operate with the left hand even during movement. Only time will tell if this would be the case. The flexible plastic mount allowed for installation without having to remove everything on the handlebar so I can slide it in which was convenient. The clamp seems to be holding it well and it is easy to reach with one finger even without lifting your arm from the grip. I then routed the cables underneath the top part of the frame where the brake and shifter lines go so it would keep the clutter to a minimum. Used zip ties for that job. While I was at it, also replaced the left hand side grip, but not with the one that came with the kit, rather with one from a set I bought separately that mounts really securely and has a lot more grip than the kit one. Next it was time to tidy up the cables and I used some more zip ties for the job, tuck them behind the controller and this should be okay for the time being as a temporary setup until I can figure out their final locations and lengths. And so finally with everything installed and connected it was time to hook it up to my portable power station and test it before I get on to building the battery pack. Good news is all is working as it should and the display is very convenient showing all sorts of useful data as well as current draw though I have my doubts if that is actually calibrated but it is available nonetheless. The hub is working reaching a pretty nice unloaded speed but I did notice that the wheel itself leaves a bit to be desired still but I guess that is to be expected. In any case this one should not be pushed through too much of a rough terrain because it just might fall to pieces. I might move the hub over to my original wheel from this bike but that would require a bit of time and knowledge that I do not yet possess so it is in the theoretical realm for the time being. 
Now, like I said, battery build will be in its own video as well as the LCD functions, but here is the completed bike, at least in its temporary configuration. Not the best looker, but it should get the job done of hauling me from one point to another with minimal pedaling, and I'm especially curious to know how well it will do on the climbs, because my city is very far from being flat, and having enough power for those uphills is very important. So, with the battery fully charged, it was time to finally take it out for a ride and see what it can do. It certainly was an interesting feeling getting to ride it for the first time. Pedaling without the hub running made it feel very hard, very heavy, but once I gave it a bit of throttle, things changed considerably. It definitely has a jolty start, though that is a short-lived experience, and even though it will not make you fight to stay on the bike, the acceleration is pretty adequate, and it does go up to about 45-47 km an hour on a flat piece of road with me on it. I weigh 90 kilograms, I assume somebody lighter would be able to reach a higher speed. I have seen it go to around 55 to 57 kilometers on a decline and generally on inclines while pedaling it would stay above 30 to 35 kilometers an hour, but on steeper ones, especially if you don't pedal, it can easily go down well below 30 kilometers. But I didn't expect wonders from something that is a mere 1000 watts, but I have to say, this level of power is absolutely sufficient, even for this hilly city. And for the most part, most people would probably not need anything more powerful for daily use on the roads and bike lanes, although on bike lanes I would most certainly not go at 45 km an hour. A thousand watt hub is definitely good enough for all the flat places you can imagine as long as you're not going to be doing regular off-roading or hill climbing. Nice thing is that using the buttons to select the power level on the screen you actually change the top speed as well. So for the bike lanes you can just drop the power level a bit and have the top speed capped around 20 to 25 km an hour then bump it back up when on the road. It is quite convenient. Good thing is this only actually changes the top speed not the force with which it reaches that top speed so you have all that regular acceleration on every level. I did not install the pedal sensor as I only ever pedal on the inclines and it works pretty dang good that way. Really like how this one turned out. Since I'm lucky enough to be living right next to one of the city sparks and it just so happens that it is located on a hillside, I took the chance to put the bike through its paces off-road, sort of, going around all of the inclines and declines and all of the food paths with no direction in general, just moving at random. It was awesome fun and I now do understand the fun of having something like this in a situation like this. Pretty awesome indeed. I had a blast. <laughs> Thank you.
that is about it for now. I will keep writing and testing it, see how it performs in the long-ish uh, run, and we'll keep you guys posted. In the meantime, the Chinese tire gave up within the first 100 kilometers. No surprises there, I guess. So I will be swapping it for the one that is on my stock wheel and will be doing some more optimizations on this one, including tidying up the wiring and component arrangement. Battery and LCD videos will follow shortly and an update on the bike after that. Ride safe and I will see you in the next one.